What is going on guys? My name is Wall Sickness and welcome to another video. So today is the day guys that I'm going to be showing you my recording settings. These are the best quality that you can ever get on your OBS. Like this is basically lossless. Like once it's onto YouTube, you will not tell the difference. And it looks so goddamn good as you can tell from the footage on the screen right this second. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is actually open OBS so I'm actually recording with OBS for this video so once you have got your OBS open all you have to do is press the settings right down there and we are just gonna zoom in onto the settings right now so general don't really have to do anything apart from if you want to change your theme but I'm happy with a dark theme so I leave it as that skip stream because this is not a streaming tutorial then go on output and then go straight on to recording so Firstly, you have to do your output mode as advanced as it will give you all the options for like CQP and especially NVIDIA NVENC. So for my recordings, I have it on my E drive as you can see right there. I have all like all my gameplay and I have like everything in folders basically. And that is the current one that I'm currently recording for you guys. But yeah, just choose a space that you want it to record to. It's always best to do a hard drive that isn't playing your games, but I've got a dedicated stream PC uh, slash editing PC, so I can basically do literally any hard drive I want to. But if you're on a single PC setup, like if you're playing your games on the D drive, make sure to do it on the E drive or C or whatever you're doing, just for that little bit of more performance, you know? So the next one is audio track. So I have number two, three and four selected. The reasons behind this is because I record. So this one is for my game. This one is for my microphone and this one is for my discord. So the reason behind this is because let's say if I get like this amazing clip, but there is someone screaming down the mic on discord, then what the hell am I going to do? You know, it's like, let's just mute it in post processing, like uh, post editing. And that's the easiest thing to do. And like, multi-track editing is like the best thing ever that has ever been created, honestly. Um, but for my microphone currently, I'm using Audacity. That's how I do all the cool effects. But I have to still record my mic on OBS because that is how I sync up my audio, if that makes any sense. I just do a couple of claps before I start recording. So next one is encoder. Make sure to do that as NVIDIA NVENC H.264. Then this is very important, guys. In brackets, new. But if you do not have that and you have an AMD graphics card, then just make sure that you are on the AMD hardware acceleration thing because recording an x264 is kind of pointless when you can record in really really high bit rates so yeah once that is that way for encoder leave rescale output how it is because that's not very very good to change it because basically it more it puts more stress on your system when you do everything inside of a video tab so the next one is rate control so i've seen so many tutorials out there that just put it as um, CBR so it's like a constant bit rate but when you're doing recordings that's really not a great thing to do the reasons behind this right so when you're recording a video you might have like a still shot like my desktop right now or you might be playing halftone or you might be in a menu of a game so that will be if yours on constant bit rate it would be you you would always be at like 25,000 bit rate or something and then when you get actually into action, it's still going to be 25,000. So no matter what, it's going to be 25,000, but you don't need that bit rate sometimes. It's the saving space too. But when action does come up, then the bit rate does come up. So the, um, you have to do a CQP level. So minus 16, that is honestly overkill, guys. But I've got nine terabytes of storage just on hard drives. So I don't really see the point of going any like basically the lower the number the bigger the file size but the better the quality so obviously if you do like 90 then it's going to look goddamn horrible but the file size is going to be insanely amazing but yeah so i have a cqp level of 16 because well if you're doing youtube i've seen like pro youtubers and stuff do like 18 19 20 kind of thing but loads of people do about 22, 21-ish. But 
personally, if I was on a single PC setup and I was trying to save space, then I would put my CQP level as 20 just because it's really good balance of quality and file size. So keyframe interval, leave that as zero. And then preset, if you're on a single PC setup, leave that on the default. I'm pretty sure that is quality, but as I'm on dual PC setup, max quality. Uh, the next one, profile, just leave it on high. That's what the default is. And then, um, so the, these two things are a little bit complicated. So the look ahead, if you just go on that comp, uh, if you do on that question mark, actually. So it says, if enabled, it will increase visual quality by only however many B frames are necessary up to a maximum at the cost of increased GPU utilization. So basically, when I'm recording it or a stream, because I'm using the same settings for streaming, it uses about 60% of my GPU, but I do have a 1650 Super. So it does create a lot of GPU strain. But if you're not playing intensive games or you're just playing like 1080p60, it's not really going to make too much of an issue. So if you're on a single PC setup, I would advise like 100% to turn these two options off because they really don't make your videos look good when you're playing a game at the same time because obviously you'll be lagging. So if you're playing like not heavy games or you're just doing webcam recordings or something, turn those on, honestly. They look they look really, really good. They, like it looks better than X264 recordings. But remember, it's gonna be added GPU usage. So the psycho visual tuning, it says, enables encoder settings that optimize the use of bitrate for increased perceived visual quality, especially in situations with high motion at the cost of increased GPU utilize utilization. So yeah, it does add on a lot more GPU utilization, but it makes your visuals a lot better. So like if you're recording at like a console or something, then definitely turn those on guys definitely turn those on but if you're doing like a single pc setup playing games then it it's genuinely not worth it it's genuinely not worth it but if you do have a headroom available then turn it on it's completely up to you though but yeah i turn mine on so then gpu turn that zero because unless you have an sli set up but that doesn't work well with obs so just make sure that's on zero then your max b frames to two and then we're going to go in audio. So I have virtual audio cables. So basically what this means is that I can separate all of my audio into different tracks. So obviously I have my, so I'm just going to tell you. So cable input right there. That is for my alerts and my stream deck. It's honestly like amazing how I can separate them all. Uh, obviously my blue snowball, that is what I'm recording. And I'm probably never going to change because it's like the best mic ever. Uh, cable A output, that is for my music. Cable B output, I'm pretty sure that's for my Discord. And line in real tech audio. Uh, that is for my gaming PC because that is how I transfer all my audio through. And it's honestly the lifesaver. Without, without it, I would be stuck back at a uh, one PC setup. And then for your video, I record in 1440p. And then whatever your base is, like whatever you want to record at, basically put your base and your output. When you're recording obviously you can do it different when you're streaming but i record at 1440p 60 frames per second then upscale my videos to 4k 60 fps because basically that gives me more bit rate on youtube to work with so the end result it does look better but when you're recording i just do 1440p a lot of people do only do 1080p 60 frames per second completely fine completely fine but I have a dual PC setup, so why not just push the max quality that you can, you know? And it will look better for your eyes too. So yeah, um, by cubic, 16 samples and 60. But yeah, you can change that to whatever resolution you want to record at, but I would recommend 1080p. Hotkeys, literally leave that alone because I do everything on my Elgato stream deck. And in advance, if you're struggling to run your stream, then try running... OBS as admin and put process priority as high. Uh, and if you're recording in to MKV, make sure you tick that automatically remux to MP4. And that is about it, guys. Make sure you press apply and then press OK.
But yeah, that is the video ended for today, guys. I really do hope that it has been informative and you have applied these OBS settings to your recordings. Every single video that is shot on my channel is with these settings. Like, no matter what, if it's a webcam recording or if it's a gaming recording, you know? It, it's just so good and it's helped me so much. But yeah, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you do need any like advice or anything on these OBS settings, then please just let me know down below in the comments, please. Make sure to put your uh, specs, so your CPU, GPU, hard drive, and your RAM. And I'll be sure to help you guys. But yeah, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you are new around here. My name's been Wolf Sickness. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Peace out. Much love. Have a great day and stay safe from the coronavirus. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.